Welcome to Today's Sound Like. I'm Rob and you're not Colin. No, I'm not. Who are you? I'm Ian. Ian? Yeah. Cool. From Kasabian. Kasabian. Yeah. So, we're going to do How to Sound Like Ian Matthews with no budget. Yay! So what are we playing? We're going to have, um, well, we're going to go on tour first. Oh, okay. Are we? We're going to go out on tour and we're going to have... Starting at Guildford. Starting at Guildford. Cool. We're going to have a Legend Series drum kit. In a beautiful colour? In a beautiful black colour. Nearly. Well, nearly. nearly. Nearly that. And we're going to have a 24 by 18. We're going to have a 13 by 9 rack tom, a 16 by 16 and an 18 by 18 floor toms. Okay. <coughs> we're going to have a Merlin snare drum. And we're going to have um, 14 inch A new beats, 19 inch K dark crash, 22 inch medium custom thing k k <laughs> a 19k dark and 19 inch k hybrid china symbol Right now, all going to be held up by Yamaha 9000 hardware. Oh, okay. Yeah. We're going right in there, are we? We're going right in there. I mean, that's... You that's know, your gig rig. Yeah. Got SPDX over there as well, just for letting off a few sounds. With some Remos on? We've got Remos. We've got Ambassador Head, Hazy on the bottom, on the snare. We've got Emperors, coated Emperors on the tops, coated Ambies on the bottom of the toms. Power Stroke 3, I believe it is, on the bass drum, and... A rather expensive um, printed drum head at the front. Of course. Of course we have. And today's journey is we emulated your sound. We kind of did. Slightly with this miniature. Rig. Yeah, well we got we got the Merlin. We got the um, fourteen by six and a half Merlin, which is what I tore with. But we went for the twelve, sixteen, twenty two, didn't we? And we actually stole some symbols out of your like B bag, didn't well, we? Well, this is the thing. When I'm not going on tour, you can sound like me by having either a lounge drum kit, the 24, 13, 16. In these sizes, which we know where you can buy. Well, yeah. Um, or, I, or I have um, uh, an imp kit at home right now. Which you actually use as your like chuck in the car chuck Saturday in the, gig, isn't chuck it? Chuck in the car, you know, do occasional jazz gig or funky thing with. And I've also currently got a Legend series in these sizes, exactly these sizes in blue at home. And a big softy. That's big, your other go-to snare, isn't I've got a big softy, Bluebird, at home floating about as well right now, which is really cool.
do gig a lot. Do you know what I mean? You do other yeah. sounds. You, there is more to Ian than just, well, I bash things quite hard. Yeah, I mean, um, it's quite nice to be able to still play because I, I love it at the end of the day. You know, it's a passion thing for me. And I love going home and the phone goes and people invite me out to play. They're basically mates of mine who I've known for years and years and years. And, um, and I go out and, you know, do stuff. It's, it's, it keeps the challenge going. I've got to learn new material, or if it's like a jazz gig, you're sat on the stage, literally improvising and reacting to the moment, and it keeps my head going. So when surge rings me up, eventually going back in the studio, you know, whatever, I'm ready for him. So what else do you have? Do you, do you use a felt beta? Is there any like a patch? What, what other little snippets do you? I use, a, well, I obviously use a Flam pad on my bass drum heads. Um, I Cushion? Use a, what, I, do you, what do you chuck in it? Um, it's an array of things, actually. <laughs> um, right now, in my big old uh, lounge bass drum, there is a some kind of vintage red velvet curtain, <laughs> which is really cool, actually, and it works really well. We really get a nice dark thud out of it. Whereas my, my imp is just empty. So um, just straight headed bass drum. Um, yeah, and I use, I'll tell you what I use on my Bluebird a lot, is the Keo drum block. Okay, so this is the new this like, is, yeah. magnetic. Yeah, the magnetic, on yeah. There. And that works so well with my Bluebird. It gives me like almost a pre EQ'd sound. Um, I also, um, for when I'm doing the more local stuff, whether it be jazz or um, or anything a little bit more lively, more rocky or funky or whatever. I, I, I'm using Constantinople crashes. I've got 17 and 19 Constantinoples, and I've also got a Z China and a 20 inch K ride and 15 inch Ks. Or oh, I've also got some 14 inch Constantinople hats as well. Um, but obviously, when I do the jazz stuff, I don't tend to use that. I tend to use a 21 inch. K uh, ride with one rivet in that I collected from Tino at Zildjian. You know, I got that from the collection there, sorry, um, when I was picking symbols out. And it'd come back from, just come back from Keith Carlock. He'd been in the country doing a tour and he got those symbols and he got his tech to put one rivet in it. So when I picked it out, I was like, oh, this is amazing. And she told me the story and she said, well, you can have it. So that's one of my prize, that's my prize left and right. <laughs> and then I use a 22 inch Constantinople low. Medium low, isn't it? The one that was in the bag? Yes, yeah. that's right. medium low, sorry, yes. Um, and then I use my 17 crash as a bit of light relief to those two with my 15 inch K hats. But I use um, sim pads. Yeah. I like the spongy ones. Yeah, they're like wetsuits for your symbols. Yeah, and I use the hi hat pads yeah yeah because I, I i you know it pads out the bell and it kind of reduces the sound of the symbol without changing its character there is one piece of gaffer tape on that 22 inch constantinople which comes from my tech sticking it on in, in a in one of the kasabian studio days when i was recording a few years back and i've never taken it off and between that little <laughs> patch of gaffer and the sim pad it works really well for what I need to do it, what I need, need from it, basically.
in the Kasabian realm, you're sort of renowned for being a fairly heavy hitter. But you're not, you don't use particularly chunky sticks either, do you? It's not like you're using tree trunks. No, no. I, I, um, I practice at home on a pad occasionally and I use 5Bs because they're a little bit more chunky than what I usually use, which are 5As. I use Vic for straight down the line 5As for all my touring and heavier playing. And today. And today. And then I use 7As if it's a little lighter, if I want a little bit less oomph. And then for the jazz stuff, I use obviously brushes and the Vic for AJ5 sticks, which are like nice and thin, kind of old school. Um, you get a nice sort of, I don't know, they're really nice on the cymbals and they're really easy to, to play with, you know, to just chuck around the kit and get little kind of fast, you know, figures out of them, you know, as opposed to the 5As, which feel a little bit like, I don't know, a little bit clumsy, you know. So, so I do tend to use different sticks for different sort of situations I might find myself in, just to give me a hand. <laughs> do you know what I mean? With what's going on. <laughs> I've just played for like the last six hours. <laughs> How many snare drums have I played? A few. You should know. You, 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 it's your... I don't know. I think I'm actually losing the plot. <laughs> so we, we, we've we played a few snares, which you can check out those videos too. It's been really fun, actually. It's been really cool. Um, what if you had to pick one bit of your setup? What is what dictates your sound, apart from your hands? Well, I think it probably starts with the kick drum. Okay. Because the kick drum is very definitive to the way you're going to sound. I su obviously, a snare drum is going to be as well. I mean, the snare drum classically, I think, is looked at as the centre of the drum kit. But actually, if I'm going to a jazz gig with a violinist and an upright bass player and a and a, and a pianist on a on a on a small on a baby grand or something, if I'm going to go with a 24 inch kick drum with my ta with my <laughs> thing in the bottom of it, yes, I can play it. It's rhythm at the end of the day, but it's so much easier to go with a small bass drum which can sing in amongst his instruments. Conversely, the other way around, you know, if I'm going to do a funk gig or something, uh, I might want a nice nice like solid 22. With Kasabian, I realised that when we were, now we were doing, you know, for years and now we do big stages and stuff, I want to use a 24 because it's got that more, it's got that deeper punch. Still gives me my beater back um, because obviously the bigger the bass drum, the slower the reaction time on the, on the rebound of the, of the, of the um, bass drum pedal. But it also looks right on the stage as well. Uh, I found years ago I, found, I discovered that my kit next to Zach Starkey's drum kit when we were supporting Oasis and Chris from Jet his drum kit you know 224 kit and my little 22 and I thought no I'm going to step up to 24. <laughs> so you had bass drum envy? Yeah <laughs> kind of no you know it just felt felt right and then actually um, with a big band I, I play with big bands every now and again you can't beat a 26 because it's just woomph. It's got air. You can't it's pretend got, it's got, it. It's got air, you know. And um, so a 26, 13, 16 is, is wonderful, you know. So I'm going to pick on the bass drum is my, cool. is my little That's your central centrepiece. Cool.
So coated top and bottom, mm. it's quite a sort of vintage sort yeah. of yeah, 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 vibe. How, how do you tune it? How do you get your what? Because to be honest, the 16 we had today sounded fat. So yeah. do you go for that sort of low yeah. fat tone? Obviously big drums. To be honest, the way we had the 16 today would be very similar to the way it would be on my kit. So you imagine an 18 behind that again, <laughs> doing the same thing. Bigger bass drum. But down again with a big bass drum. Um, the, now the bass drum is, is complete. So there's no hole in the front head. And inside is a, a thin piece of uh, sponge. The front head, I think, has a... No, definitely the back head, actually, has a, a felt strip. Oh, so you're going proper vintage. Yeah. And on the... On the piece of sponge rests a flat mic, I think they call it a PZM thing. And inside the bass drum, so you've got your flat mic and then right above it, you've got a horseshoe with the rubber. Kelly shoes? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. With a, one of those round bass drum mics in that I have no idea what it's called. Um, your and, text just going, yeah, commenting below. Yeah, going, <laughs> and they're perfectly in line. So. I've got, first of all, I've got a bass drum that is in pure bass drum mode. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's not got a hole or anything like that to, to disrupt the front head. So it, it sounds, acoustically sounds beautiful. And you've got two mics in there. And I've got it's, two mics in there. One is taking the, 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 the general ambience of what's going on in there. And the other one is taking the direct hit from the beater. And so that goes out to the front of the house. Uh, I've got, obviously got Keith just to put me an extra air hole, just to let the, the leads out. Um, and then, yeah, I've got those two bass drum mic lead, uh, feeds going to the mono, uh, to the engineers. So it's a monstrous bass drum sound. It's a wonderful bass drum sound. Um, like I say, yeah, they're, they're not wrinkly. They're up from wrinkly, but they're definitely, the, the sound we're going for is, is fat and low. Uh, and that includes the 13. I might have the 13 up a tiny bit. Um, just because if you have your drums too fat and low, then you start to lose rebound. So if you want to tear around the kit for whatever reason, you're going to have to put more work into it. Well, you hit so, quite firm anyway, so you're pulling notes yes. out of a fairly yeah. sort of loosely tuned. Yeah. You're pulling the note out and by hitting quite hard. That's right. And I, I, you know, I tend to, I think I've got a pretty good technique where I, you know, allow rebound back into my hand anyway. So I'm not leaving the stick behind, you know, literally the sticks are rebounding back into my hand, you know? So, um, so yeah, uh, the snares are not super high, but again, they're not, it's not super low. I might just have a piece of, uh, piece of moon gel on the snare drum, maybe two, depending on the room. And then the toms will have one piece of moon gel on them each as okay. well, just for a touch of focus. They're also big drums. So there's a lot of surface area going on. So like a tiny touch of moon gel on there, is is enough to give them that little bit of focus and i got loads of attack with coated heads it's a completely different sound to the clear head thing you know um but yeah that's kind of that's kind of my thing yeah cool so this has been sound like me i've thoroughly enjoyed myself here today with uh, rob and the team i'd like to say thank you to taylor for being really patient today <laughs> and uh <laughs> It's been fun and I hope you've enjoyed it. And I guess hopefully I'll see you somewhere out on the road. Leave your comments below. I promise I won't read them. <laughs> <laughs> see you later.